Fox 45's relentless coverage of the dire situation in some Baltimore County public schools continues. Last week, Project Baltimore broke the story of 23 city schools with zero students testing proficient in math. That's 2,000 students. Exactly, and despite the problems within some city schools, leadership is setting their sights on a charter school that has a history of success. After being at risk of losing its charter, city school CEO Dr. Sonia Santalisa is tonight recommending boys collegiate stay and Baltimore collegiate stay open with some conditions. Well, tonight, Fox 45 News demands answers from Mayor Brandon Scott and takes a closer look at the future for Boys Collegiate Charter School. Our team coverage begins with Keith Daniels. He joins us live with the outcome of tonight's school board meeting. Keith? Well, Mary and Kai, that meeting wrapping up just moments ago, tense moments for charter school officials who sat through this board meeting for, for just over three hours before learning the potential fate of their school, the school's future resting in the hands of Baltimore City School CEO Dr. Sonia Santelisis. Now, an effectiveness evaluation found the charter failed in several categories, including meeting federal and state requirements in many areas, including management of grant funds. Now, charter officials described it as simple technicalities, such as missing paperwork or data entry errors. But in the end, Dr. Santelisis recommended the three-year renewal with conditions for the charter, a decision she made after visiting the school recently. I will tell you that there was a palpable difference, and staff agreed, um, in the climate of a school that, frankly, a year and a half ago uh, was in complete disarray. Um, and that was not what I found when I walked in, unannounced, by the way. We will actually have a um, high-performing school uh, for young men in Baltimore. I'm very gratified that the CEO is willing to to take that chance on us, um, to continue to work for us to build a school that's going to be able to educate as many boys in this city as possible. And so I know that she has the belief that she knew we took some really hard moves to get us here. We had to make some very hard decisions with regards to changing up the leadership that we had in the school. Well, take a look at this image. I caught this photo right after the CEO announced her decision. The charter CEO, Edwin Avent, with someone else sitting by his side, both looking extremely relieved. Now, the Board of Commissioners will have the final say on this, whether to accept Dr. Santelisa's recommendation or not. They come back to vote on this matter next week. And, of course, we'll keep you posted. We're live now at City Schools headquarters, Keith Daniels. Fox 45 News. Keith, thank you. Well, on Fox 45 News at 5 o'clock today, we spoke with former city councilman Carl Stokes, who also ran a charter school that was shut down several years ago. He tells us he believes what's happening now comes down to politics. Yeah, I found it was very political. Um, the CEO told me that she was closing the school for personal reasons, political reasons, as a matter of fact. And I think that's the same thing going on here. We also asked Stokes if Boys Collegiate does get shut down, whether the 23 underperforming public schools deserve to be shut down as well. Well, of course they should. The 23 or so schools where they have zero, and I've never heard that number in the entire history of me working with schools, zero students who are proficient in math, uh, and in some cases very low in uh, English or language arts. And of course those schools and the CEO should be judged and evaluated on what she's doing uh, with the greater number of schools. Well, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo also weighing in on the city schools report. He's calling it a scandal. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott also tweeting about it. He posted a Fox 45 news story about the report saying, quote, failed leadership in our schools diminishes their opportunity for a brighter future. School choice expands students' access to a quality education, the key to America's promise. As this story gains national attention right now, Mayor Brandon Scott is breaking his silence on the topic. After ignoring our questions for days, Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost pressed the mayor in person. She continues our team coverage.
Mayor Brandon Scott says it's on everyone to make sure students are successful in the classroom. He also says that these test results were predictable. Given that, we asked him if this wasn't a surprise. How come more wasn't done to ensure students were more successful and prepared for the test in the first place? For days, Fox 25 News has been sending questions to Mayor Brandon Scott, asking about the 23 schools without anyone able to do math at grade level. Mayor Brandon Scott and his team simply ignoring the questions until now. To see uh, our neighbors. Mayor Scott demanding to take the questions at a podium at an unrelated event. Speak now because I, I have to leave right after. How do you defend those results and do you believe that there should be a change in leadership at city schools? Well, I think uh, a couple of things on that, McKenzie. The reality is, despite you guys' inability to say it, that city schools, like school districts across these United States of America, uh, have been experiencing decreases in math results between 2019 and 2022. The mayor coming prepared with a list of talking points, pointing to data. The district's rate of change in both math and ELA from 2019 were better than the state of Maryland. And attacking Fox 45 News instead of talking about immediate solutions. You guys are choosing to focus on a data point uh, from that recent assessment instead of telling the full story. That statement similar to the one Baltimore City Public Schools posted on social media. Despite the fact that 2,000 students are unable to perform proficiently in math in high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools across Baltimore. The mayor also says the fact that Baltimore City ranks last in the entire state of Maryland in the math scores isn't a shock. That's no surprise to anybody. This is what we should be talking about here. We knew that this would happen. If you say this was predictable, then why wasn't anything done to ensure these students didn't test this poorly? I think you, I'll just say, Mackenzie, that in my response, I already gave you a response, right? And again, you compare it to one, I said the state, jurisdictions across the state and how city schools have made progress. And they did a lot of work, right? Mayor Scott leaving the event before we could ask even more questions. Given the city's history of ghost students, grade changing, and students graduating unprepared, we followed up with the mayor's office sending an email asking, do you support criminal fraud investigations into possible misuse of tax dollars? On the east side of town, Baltimore Collegiate School for the Boys at risk of losing its charter for what the leader of the school calls technicalities. So we also asked the mayor, should the schools without students testing proficient in math also be shut down? Despite promising a response, the mayor's office not answering the questions by news time. The mayor saying everyone needs to do their part to help city schools while the family's living with the reality of unprepared students. I can't afford no thousand dollar tutor from Sylvan, but that's what he needs. They're left wondering. I feel like they don't care. It's not their children. They don't care. When or if anything will change in Baltimore City Public Schools. Baltimore City Councilman Robert Stokes, who chairs the Education Workforce and Youth Committee, says that he does plan to call an oversight hearing to bring City School CEO Dr. Sony Santalisis before the council to get answers about these test scores. But Councilman Stokes says given the upcoming budget hearings, the hearing with city schools and this math proficiency problem likely won't take place until April. In Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. As Mackenzie mentioned, Councilman Stokes says, or former Council Councilman Stokes says, a city schools hearing likely won't happen until April. Now, we do know the council has acted quickly on some other issues. For instance, last year, the council took three weeks to pass a bill lowering the amount of time city leaders need to spend in office to receive a pension in response to voters approving term limits on the November ballot. A city council committee passed the bill on November 3rd, five days before voters headed to the polls. Days later, the council advanced the bill on a second reader. The bill passed 8 to 5 on November 21st. Mayor Brandon Scott vetoed that bill. Well, we want to know what you think. Should parents be given school choice if their child's school is failing? So far, 95% of voters say yes. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. Stay with Fox 45 News. Our crisis in the classroom team coverage continues at 1030. We'll hear from the CEO of Boys Collegiate School about why he feels it's so important the school stays open.